You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. That intercept was 6.8 meters at 3.67% copper and 0.26 grams per ton gold. So that's a very consistent type corner bay uh, result where we're getting uh, multiple meters over 3.5% copper. Another significant intercept was hole 34, where we have 3.6 meters at 4.5% copper. Thank you for tuning in to Mining Stock Education. I'm Bill Powers, your host. And in today's episode, we are going to be getting an update from Dore Copper, one of our sponsors, and its president, CEO, and co-founder, Ernie Mast. Ernie, thanks for coming on the show again today. You just put out some new results from Corner Bay, which I'm sure you're happy about. Can you remind us the goals of Dore Copper? And then how does Corner Bay fit into your overall goals here? And how do the current drill results, what do they mean for the development of this Corner Bay project? Great to be on the show again, Bill, and thank you for having me. Dore Copper's objective is to restart the copper gold mines in the Shibugamu mining camp with a hub and spoke operation and the Corner Bay property is actually going to be the cornerstone of that operation where we're looking to establish a plus 5 million ton resource, which would uh, be the main mining operation in that hub and spoke. And the current exploration program, we are looking to continue to expand the size of Corner Bay. Our drilling programs that we've done to date have successfully expanded the deposit from one and a half million to three million tons, and we're awaiting a resource in Q3, where we're start, where we're expecting another significant increase. So the recent drill results, in fact, are just building upon the resource. Uh, we've had an intercept um, which was 65 meters up dip from the furthest intercept to the south. That intercept was 6.8 meters at 3.67% copper and 0.26 grams per ton gold. So that's a very consistent type corner bay uh, result where we're getting uh, multiple meters over 3.5% copper. Another significant intercept was hole 34, where we have 3.6 meters at 4.5% copper. That is in a slightly different direction. It's towards the north and it's connecting the deep, the main vein below the dike to the deep lens. And so that's another area for expansion. And in addition, on that same side, uh, in that same area below the dike, towards the southern end, we had 10.45 meters at 2.23% copper, including 4.6 meters at 4% copper and one gram per ton gold. So we see that gold byproduct coming into Corner Bay as, as well. So we're very comfortable, very happy with the expansion of the deposit uh, below the dike. In the press release also, we announced some results from above the dike. This is a bit shallower, and it's the first time we drilled this part of the ore body since we've gotten back into uh, exploration at Corner Bay. And again, we had some very good results where we had uh, four and a half meters at 3% in hole 21-37. And in hole 21-31, we had three meters at 4.09%. So we're looking also at a resource increase in the area above the dike. And in both cases, above the dike and below the dike, the mineral resource is open towards the south. And in the area between the deep main, the deep lens and the main vein below the dike, uh, there's a gap there of about 100 meters that needs to be infilled. And all of that represents potential expansion of the ore body. So how many more meters will you be drilling before you have that cutoff point and determine you're going to just issue that updated resource? So the updated resource, uh, we're just waiting for one assay, and then we're going to put a line in the sand and do the updated resource. And that resource is going to be used for a PEA to be published at the end of the year. Uh, but we continue to drill the deposit. So we will continue to the drill deposit, uh, say, another 15,000 meters over the course of this year and early next year. And those holes will continue to expand the resource. So we will come up with a new resource statement, but we're going to be continuing to expand it. And the expanded resources will be used for a, 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 a later study, say, our, our, our follow-up study to the PA that we're currently going to be doing. 
Ernie, for listeners that may not be as versed in copper grades and successful copper drill results as you or some listeners, put in per- historical perspective and well, wo- worldwide perspective, I should say, what does three to 4% copper mean when you look at some of the copper deposits worldwide? Well, we represent some of the highest grade uh, copper grades in the world. Uh, obviously, in Africa, you're stable to find uh, three, four percent copper deposits, but they're very rare in other parts of the world. And we're one of the few deposits that has that. And the exciting thing about our deposits, that's continuing to grow. As I mentioned, when we do the resource update, we're expecting to be over five million tons. And uh, as the deposit will remain open after that resource estimate. So there's still further growth in uh, that's that's uh, that's uh, still further growth in the plans. So you have many projects that are going to feed one mill, the hub and spoke model. Have you made any progress on your other projects, such as your Joe Man project, since we spoke last? On the Joe Man project, we'll, we'll be updating, uh, coming up with a resource update uh, very soon, and then that's going to be part of the PA. Uh, we're also beginning to uh, talk with the different uh, service firms who will be doing the PA for us. And we expect to have someone selected uh, during August and they would start the work having it to have the PA finished in, uh, in December. Some of the other plans we're doing is we're also going to be drilling uh, the recently acquired Norbo property. We're drilling two veins on the Norbo property. We've got a grid set up of uh, approximately 16 holes between two different veins. Uh, this the Norbo property is principally a gold property and it's very shallow and we're going to commence drilling that uh, during the month of July. So we should have some news out on Norbo later this, uh, say, say in the fall. So there's no backup at the assay lab for you with COVID or the busyness of miners. You're, you're getting your results back in a timely manner. We are getting them back in a timely manner, but it is taking a little bit longer than we've seen in the past. And this is, uh, I think this has been an issue for uh, a lot of the uh, exploration companies where we're seeing that the labs are backed up. Uh, Partially, it's due to uh, two things. First of all, I think the labs themselves had some COVID protocols where they may have had to restrict some manpower and that's created a backlog. And second thing is the industry is very robust and very buoyant at this point. So there, there's really a, a lot of drilling going on. We're very fortunate in that uh, we have a long-standing relationship with our lab and we're able to get priority when we need to. For uh, listeners that are just learning about the company, timeline to production, if everything continues to go well, is it still about late 2023, uh, 2024? That time frame is what you're looking at? That would be That would be correct, yeah. Okay. And you have had no issue raising capital this year. Uh, Tell us again, how much have you raised this year? We're only halfway through the year. And then you raised recently 14.6 million. Who came into this stock? What type of investors did you bring in? So the main investor in the most recent raise uh, were institutional buyers and some high net worth individuals. Uh, Some of the buyers were new to the stock, which was very exciting for us. Uh, having new new investors that uh, have done well in the copper space, and we're looking for, let's say, another win in the copper space, and 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 they uh, are supporting us very uh, very strongly as we move forward with our exploration plans. Uh, we don't plan any more money raising until well into next year. Uh, there's really no need for it at this point. So we're really well financed to finish off the PA and then start our feasibility study afterwards. Are you at like? 30 to 40 million in the treasury right now, right? A little less, 24 million Canadian. 24, okay. Because you got a lot of drill programs burning through the cash. So what is your burn rate at this point? Yeah, the burn rate is about a million dollars and a half a month at this point. Uh, And so you can see with that, we're well funded uh, well into next year or even through next year. And as uh, we look towards the next three to six months, it's the PEA at Corner Bay. Uh, moving, uh, sorry, the mineral resource update moving into the PEA and then also a PEA at the Joe Man project. Would those be the key catalysts to look for? So, correct. So, there'll be drill results continuing to come from Corner Bay, some drill results coming from Norbo. Uh, we're doing some drilling at some other properties. Uh, the resource updates at Joe Man and at Corner Bay, and then a PEA, which is going to incorporate a number of mines feeding the mill. And and those will be the main catalysts for the rest of this year. 
Excellent. Well, the company again is Dore Copper Mining. It's a high grade copper and gold project in Shibugamu, Quebec. The hub and spoke model, as we've been talking about on in Toronto, you can find the ticker DCMC in the States. It's DRCMF. And also in Frankfurt, it trades under DCM and the website is DoreCopper.com. Ernie, thanks for coming on the show and providing an update. My pleasure, Bill, and and all the best uh, for the summer for yourself and your listeners. 